Hey, Radical fans, I'm Phil. I'm Andrew. We're going to talk to you today about uh, drilling patterns and lane ball layouts for uh, at home and on tour. Yeah, so the huge difference of what we bowl on, really, right? We talk about high ratio house patterns where you have a lot of hook to the right, oil to the left. Complete opposite can be said about tour. You have oil to the, <laughs> you have oil to the right, hook in front of you. It could be, so right. So when you miss left, your ball hooks more. When you miss right, the ball goes forever. House patterns, generally, the more you miss right, the more the ball will hook. Exactly. So, well, that's what you're hoping for. So, um, <laughs> the layouts change immensely for me. Uh, really, uh, not a whole lot visually, right? So, these two are my generic layouts for both an asymmetric and a symmetrical ball. This is four and three quarters axis, and this is also four, three, four and three quarters axis, but you'll see that it's just a touch taller on the asymm ball, and that is to make it a touch more responsive and uh, a little more off of the friction um, in, a, mm -hmm. in a more of a check mark type of motion way. So the lower I go with it, the smoother the ball motion. But I like to stay in the five to four and three quarter range as a generic first right. time drilling a ball. Now when I bowl on house patterns, I, you'll start to see me do pins that are over here, which is a touch weaker, farther from axis. My axis are over here, they're gonna go farther away. That's to make them a touch weaker, get them down right. the lane more, right. but even more responsive to the friction. So it moves your break point down, yeah. basically, right? Yeah. yeah, so on house patterns, I find that I want to have a, a lot of motion down the lane. Right. I don't really care what happens in the front part of the lane. I'm right. looking just for as much motion down, down the lane, lane as possible. Right. When I bowl on flat patterns and one-to-one -one ratio, some of these really f hard flat ones where when you miss right, you want the ball to be slowing down very quickly. Right. When you miss left, you want the ball to be slowing down very quickly because you want it to be blended. Yes. You, want, you don't want to see a big violent motion right. very often. Right. So you'll see me use much stronger pins, lower pins on sport patterns, even more pin down layouts. Right. Where on house patterns, you'll never catch me doing that because right. I want a super violent motion down the lane. So you'll see me more often than not doing taller right. pins mm -hmm. and weaker. And a lot of that's because you're a power player. Yeah, and I have more vibrate. I like right. to throw it a touch right. harder. Right, but, but the average guy who maybe is not a power player, he might lean towards weaker pins even on a house shot simply so you can stay closer to the dry. I would actually say that most people should lean towards stronger pins really? because of rev rate. Yeah. When you have, your average rev rate guy is probably 350, right. 375. Right. Like, and it's okay to think that you're higher and you not be. Like, again, we used this reference before. I think I hit the ball like Bryson. I don't. Right. Um, when you're a lower rev rate player, the thing about matching up your bowling ball mm -hmm. is matching up how strong of a pin you need right. to make it roll. Right. If, uh, if you're throwing a really weak pin over here and your rev rate's only 350, the ball's never going to get into a roll. Right. And that's the most important and part. And that would just force you closer to the dry to get close, the friction. Force you closer and it'll be even more violent. Right. Where you want to be uh, able to be a touch farther away from the friction okay. but have a very early... Uh, mm -hmm responsive motion. Right. So generally speaking, the lower the rev rate, the stronger the pin, and the taller the pin. Gotcha. That's the rule of thumb. Okay. Obviously matching up speed to that is yeah. important. Yeah, that, that would be cover stock for Yeah. Team. Right. Yeah. So um, yeah. when it comes to league patterns, you're generally going to have taller, stronger pins for the right. generic bowler. Right. And for sport patterns for the same bowlers, you'll see lower, lower pins, pins, maybe a touch weaker, touch weaker to control them more. Right. Because right. my range, because of my rev rate, right. is four and three quarter or five to axis. That'll mean that I make a ball that is asymmetric, that has this much diff, which is 052, 020, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, it'll probably flare about four and a half to five and a half inches. Right. Where if I drilled this like four or three and three eighths, I could flare the whole ball. I right. mean, this I could flare eight, nine inches. Yeah. That yeah. would just be yeah. too much for too me. Too much for you. But because of the rev rate, if you had a 350 rev rate with the same layout, it's not going to flare as much as mine is. Right. It's not going to roll as fast. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, when you're looking at building your arsenal for house shot versus sport pattern tournaments, take some of that into consideration. Uh, on flat patterns, smooth is the way to go, generally speaking. You right. always want more predictable ball motion. You want to you stay away from those splits. You yeah, symmetrical. Away. Yep. Symmetrical, and if it's asymm, sometimes down layouts. Right, yeah, pin down. When you ball on the house shot, do the boomer layouts. Get your ball right. to hook as much as you want. Yeah. yeah have yeah, fun free, with it. Yeah, yeah, free hook, it's okay. Yeah, it's given to you. Yeah. Sometimes you have to create right. it. Right. Yeah, and, and I, like you said, touching on that again, when you have a flatter pattern, dial it in. Try to keep it more control. Yep. Uh, keep the ball in front of you. Asymm with pin down is not a bad thing on a flatter pattern. Yep. Um, symmetrical balls, you know, play with surfaces. Right. You know, and that's the best way to go to attack it. Uh, stay away from the big two ends unless it's free hook, right. wide open shots. Right. Right. And uh, you know, 
always ask your pro shop for advice when talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. Like, uh, get your access if possible. Learn some of that. Uh, take it into consideration when you think about your next bowling ball. Think about how you want to lay it out. I mean, you can do so much with a bowling ball nowadays. Sure, you can. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though weight holes are gone, you can you can make this ball do a lot of things. Yeah, and, and we built a lot of that in. Once the weight hole rule came into place at Radical, we were ahead of them. We knew it was coming. They told us it was coming. So we started designing cores that you can blow up the intermediate diff and the total diff just simply by putting holes in the ball. Whereas before, you drilled it and had to put a weight hole or a balance hole in it to blow up the diffs. Uh, we build it into the core now. The way the core is shaped, where your thumb hole goes in the ball, or where your finger hole is yeah. going in the ball, change the entire uh, makeup of the ball's motion. Right, and when we're talking yeah. about differentials, we're talking about how much a ball flares, potential, or the right. total hook potential in general. Yeah. So when you blow that up, you blow up the hook potential, the, over amount, the overall amount of motion that right. your ball will make. Right, So, again, that was a question submitted on the, the fan, in the fan group. Um, we love it. We thanks, thank you for the question. And Andrew and I will be back with some more topics. Thank you.